Yeah, what's up YouTubers? Um, today I'm just going to do a bit of a video on squid and how I catch them. I'm by no means a pro angler when it comes to squid fishing. So I'm going to simply run through how I go out and find squid and how I catch them and maybe show you a few little jigs. But yeah, if you like the video, give us a like. If you don't, give us a dislike. Tell us why if you dislike it or how I can improve the videos in the future. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so tackle, everyone's seen a squid jig before. Um, they come in different sizes. I have a range of colours and I'll have, I'll keep it really simple when I select colours. Like I'll have bright colours and then I'll have natural colours. If it's a bright sunny day, I might use a natural colour. Start off with natural colours and find out which natural colour works best. Uh, or, if, or if the water's a bit dirty or if it's cloudy or something, I might use some bright colours and just sort through, see what works best. I find with the expensive jigs are without doubt better, but by how much is questionable. Um, for instance, yesterday I was using the Shimano versus the El Cheapo. The Shimano cost, what, $18, and the El Cheapo cost $4. And I was holding the rod with the Shimano on, and I was drifting with the, the El Cheapo at the back, and the El Cheapo caught three squid and the uh, Shimano caught four squid, but I had that rod in my hand, so I was working it a lot more. They're better balanced, the more expensive ones, and I guess better made. <clears throat> it's definitely worth having at least a couple of good ones in your kit, and then maybe a range of um, cheapos. That's what I do, but that's up to you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna try and explain this in a general sense, because people fish in various parts of the world. So squid will usually hang around um, edges of reefs or weed banks or a bit of structure, broken ground. Um, and there's some good places to start looking for squid. I've got a couple of tools that I can use um, to help me find that, and that's the chart plotter. I, I can look on Navionics, and normally if there's a reef or something like that, it'll, it should be marked, or you, you'll see the contour lines, and you can see where it goes from deeper water up to shallower water. And that's normally an indication of some sort of reef or some sort of bank um, and the other thing is um, your sounder so you can use your sounder and look at the bottom that's another way and the last way is with your eyes if you're fishing in shallow water your eyes are probably the one of the main things you use look at the bottom and you can see where the edges of reefs are and as reference points and then you just mark it in your um, chart plotter and you just drift over the reef or over the structure or over this the, the weed bank until you find the patch of squid. They school up, so there won't just be one, there'll be lots. And if you hit that, as long as you, every drift you're hitting that GPS mark, you're gonna, you're gonna keep catching after, one after the other. Like, it's really simple. And if you have, I normally just use four, four I use my maximum limit of rods, which is four. I'll maximize my drifts normally. Once I find the squid, after a few drifts, I'll be bagged out and off snapper fishing or something. Yeah, it's really it's simple to do. I'm gonna run through a couple of the two techniques I'm using. The first one's just when you're holding the rod, it's just a lot like soft plastic, so you just cast it out. And the idea is to let your jig sink down to the closest possible to the bottom without touching the bottom. And then you just wanna give it a few jigs and it'll dart around like a wounded shrimp or whatever. After you jig it, when it flutters down, the squid will attack it. The other technique is just in the rod holders. Um, so what you want to do is you look at your sander, work out how deep you are. Say if you're in four meters, you might cast it out six or seven meters. And depending on the tides and the currents, um, is how far you cast it out to. You know, you ideally you just want it near the bottom, and the waves will work the jig up and down and the squid will just come up and eat it. If you're in deeper water, cast out further and you've just got to work it out. So some other general tips is if you're fishing um, deeper water, another technique you can do is you can tie it on like a paternoster rig with a heavy sinker down the bottom and then do a dropper loop and just put it through the dropper loop and just let it go, let it go down near the bottom and obviously keep your sinker, your lead off the bottom and that will just drift along and you'll catch squid like on a paternoster rig, believe it or not. If you're fishing a bay or an estuary, water clarity, um, clean water, 
struggling to find them and you're in a bit of dirty water, you might want to look for some clean water. So if you head towards the heads or wherever you're fishing, the water will be a bit cleaner. Another, the last thing is tide changes. Um, I find that leading up to the high tide is, is really good. Um, but in saying that, you can catch squid on all tides. If you're fishing a low tide, maybe try out a slightly deeper. If you like the video, you can subscribe for some more videos. Cheers. Tighten the drag. Is it pretty tight now? Or you should be able to feel it. Is it pulling you? No. Nice.